Hi everyone. Hi everyone. So the season 27 patch notes just dropped and I'm here on vacation with Nini and recording from the phone. So excuse the scuffed layout. I do it this way because I can also show you my screen and talk about the patch notes. I will have the link in the description so you can also go read them at your own pace. I just want to give my first impressions here and then I'm gonna talk about them in more detail when I return home on Sunday evening. And the patch actually drops on the PTR on Tuesday already. So it's just four days to go and then we can jump in and try it all out. And it looks really exciting. So let's get into it. All right, just changing the screen here. I have this open. All right, so hope the audio is fine. And this dropped earlier, just like an hour ago or two or something about uh, patch 2.74 season 27 and we have a pretty amazing season theme so if you see this here uh, the angelic crucibles they're called is a new consumable item that you can use to effectively make an item into a primal and give an extra stat so it sounds a little bit like uh, ethereal season 2.0 to me so there is uh, three different uh, extra stats that you can add to an item and you can have one of those items equipped at a time and um, this is three uh, legendary effects per class actually so 21 in total every class has three different ones and they actually look really cool so you can find them at level 70 you can uh, use them on any item including non-ancients you preserve the legendary affix so for example when you find like a high roll like yang's v curve you can keep it and use it and uh, later on upgrade it to a sanctified item and I believe this will be mostly used on weapons, simply because of the insane power of making the rolls perfect on weapons. Usually you have the damage range that is very important and the affix on top of it. And there's actually really cool effects. So you can see them here. Barbarian has uh, like a whirlwind pull. Not really that crazy, but uh, some of them look really powerful. So if you look at um, the, the Hem of the Ancient one, for example, Hem of the Ancients is already a very strong build and uh, this is gonna be really insane i believe so we have to see for some playtesting for some of these but uh, overall some of them look extremely strong there's also like a more like generic one here with the tempest rhythm um, that we can see here so uh, basically it can give like a damage debuff to your enemies so i guess it's going to be used for builds that do not have him of the ancients and in whirlwind we'll see where that will be used maybe in farming builds Crusader also has some really interesting effects. So there's some stuff with Blast Hammer, which could mean like all or nothing. Not really sure how strong this would be, but uh, yeah, Blast Hammer is not exactly very good these days. Same with Fist of the Heavens. Every two seconds to get a Fist of the Heavens for free. Also seems very weak to me. But then you have this Falling Sword effect here that uh, summons angels. And if you remember season 20, uh, sorry, season 19, with the angels, this could be potentially extremely broken. So I'm quite excited to see that one. I think Demon Hunter has probably the most exciting effects with Strafe casting your last non-channeled Hatred Spender. So this is this is insane, I believe. So I mean, I think we can do some really crazy builds, basically like the God Demon Hunter. But imagine this with multi-shot, with cluster arrows. And uh, there's also some other really interesting effects here, like uh, the cluster arrow concentrates its explosive force into a piercing ray of light, whatever that means. So uh, that sounds also pretty broken. Uh, I'm quite excited to see how this actually looks. And there's also another effect of Vengeance. So I think Demon Hunter overall has really strong stuff here that is uh, interesting to experiment with. Maybe you can even make some you know, other really strange builds like a Strafe, Impale, Marauder build or something like that where you can like you know throw spenders in all directions. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, Monk also has some crazy stuff here, especially with Wave of Light. So uh, the first effect here, Wave of Light is already one of the top builds in the game and this could potentially make it super broken with um, you know summoning a bell and then you can have up to seven of them at the same time and they all deal damage when you attack it. So this sounds like some insane AoE uh, fiesta. To me, the other two effects, that really depends on what we're actually going to do with them, especially the seven-sided strike could be interesting if it uh, works like on its own, like without damage multipliers. So if you don't actually need to stack something, you know, for seven-sided strike, 
could be interesting to like throw in some builds and see what happens. Necromancer has some uh, really interesting stuff as well, especially the second effect here with the Army of the Dead. Army of the Dead with Rathma set is very powerful and then having like a permanent effect of that all the time around you sounds really strong. And they also gave it some extra like corpse effects on the golems. I don't really believe that is going to be so exciting. It's probably just going to make it a bit more smooth, especially on farming builds where I can run around and uh, also attack without Land of the Dead up, which is very nice. And then we have the Death Nova effect. There's also more on Death Nova in a second with a Tragus rework here. But in general, this also looks really strong where you get like some extra spirits that afflict enemies. So if they are, you know, in any way powerful, with Death Nova being probably a pretty high build this season, this could be a nice effect to have. Witcher Cross have some pretty weird stuff. So there is uh, the Haunt that pulls all enemies in 50 yards together. So 50 yards is massive. That's almost an entire screen where you can just pull everything in. And if that like pixel pulls enemies, this could be insane for something like Jade Harvester, even Mundunugu. Uh, Horrify becomes an aura with damage buff and, and damage reduction. Doesn't seem that crazy, but it might help for some of builds. And Gargantian spreads Locust Swarm, which seems not exactly very useful. And you also summon zombie dogs which also don't really do that much most of the time. And finally, there's the wizard with the storm armor that calls down a thunderbolt that instantly kills an enemy in 30 yards. So this sounds actually extremely funny. I believe most is gonna create some funny scenes, but probably not really gonna be that strong. You can't kill bosses, but you take significant damage. So I already heard some talk about like, you know, triple wizard groups or something like that, which potentially kill bosses. Uh, could be funny, but I don't believe this is really going to be such a crazy effect. What is really strong though is the Arcane Orb, I believe. So Arcane Orb, Frozen Orb in particular, could be extremely powerful with some of these builds. There's also a DMO rework, which you're going to see in a second. So this could have some implications there. And Magic Missile fires 20 missiles. So <laughs> they just took it and, and multiplied the amount of missiles. I don't think it's going to be very strong, but it's certainly going to be very fun to try this out. Then there's a few general updates, mostly that um, adventure mode is open for all accounts, uh, some small quality of life improvements like the uber boss uh, portals close now, and uh, they nerfed the Echoing Nightmares. So in case you haven't um, followed those news, Echoing Nightmares is a permanent feature now in Diablo 3, so it will stay in the game, it will be a non-season, you can get these petrified screams everywhere but they nerfed the XP, which was very needed because the Echoing Nightmare XP meta is yeah, probably really boring at this point for a lot of people that stick to the season. Here's some item changes. So they tried to make a new like, um, like general set for all classes. The Guardian set was reworked. You get 50% base vitality and base um, like main stats basically. So this sounds kind of interesting. I'm not really sure if this is strong enough but we'll see in action and we'll see some numbers. I believe there could be at least a few setups that use it uh, with those values, but it overall seems kind of weak and also kind of uninspiring. So when I think about effects like the Captain Crimson set, that actually changes a bit how you want to gear a character. I believe that here we don't really see that much of an effect because Vitality will stay like a rather low priority stat. Main stat will stay a rather high priority stat, and I don't think this will really change much in that aspect. But it is definitely nice to see that I can move forward with some of these um, generic sets. So maybe you're also going to see an eventual rework to the Demon set, for example, or Shiras or something like that. Here is the Crusader changes. So the Akan set was changed. It's going to be a Condemn slash Judgment slash Phalanx set now. So uh, this is clearly focused towards Condemn, even though they didn't actually change the 6-piece bonus that gives damage to every ability. But uh, yeah, very clearly um, the, the Phalanx avatar is going to play a huge role. You're going to have massive amounts of Condemn explosions. Could be quite powerful. So Condemn is not exactly really weak. And if you have like 10 guys running around with you constantly exploding in Condemn explosions, that actually sounds kind of powerful. So I'm excited to see this. Necromancer with Tragul's avatar. So this is the Death Nova set that I mentioned, which actually seems quite close to um, the concept video that I made some months ago. So essentially, we have a Death Nova set now. So you spend your life to cast massive Death Novas 
we have reworks to Iron Rose and Funerary Pick, which yeah, all seems very close to something that I was suggesting. And uh, I'm actually very excited about this. So I believe this is going to be a very strong build. Just looking at those numbers, it always looks really nice. And you also have a bit of extra single target damage. You have uh, extra like control over what you actually deal damage to, with the Siphon Blood in particular. So I believe this is going to be great. It's going to be mobile because of the Blood Rush. So yeah, everything is there. So I, I'm really excited to try this out. It might still feel a bit squishy because the four piece change actually didn't give any real damage reduction, just this like maximum life mechanic. But we will see how this actually plays out in practice. Definitely one of the first things for me to try. And also Wizard has two reworks in fact. So you have the DMO, which um, was basically uh, changed into a bit more like of a mobile set. So now you cast slow times when you hit an enemy that doesn't already have a slow time uh, on it. So you can basically just teleport in, you automatically attack and cast slow time at the same time. And you also reset your teleport, so you're going to be mobile as well. And you have more damage reduction. I believe DMO will mainly stay a twister build, so I don't think that it will really change much for the overall playstyle, at least in pushing. But it might become like a more like solid farming option with potentially this magic mi missile effect that we saw earlier. So at least something like this could be worth trying for the season. And then we have Tarasha, which actually became a Meteor set again now. So two-piece bonus was reworked to give you complete immunity some to some elements, which sounds nuts. So defensively, this is extremely strong besides poison and physical damage, I guess. And you also drop meteors of the same type when you hit an enemy, but you have to alternate between two different uh, damage types all the time because you cannot have to twice in a row. And then we have the four piece, which is uh, mostly unchanged but it gives you like extra resistances now, I believe. And we also have a rework to the Smoldering Core, which it gives Meteor increasing damage with more hits. So this is very clearly like a Meteor Shower like build now, I guess. So not really star packed, which I believe is fine. I was hoping to see a bit more of like a creative rework here with the Tarasha, I gotta say. So maybe where I can potentially combine runes. So I have like a Meteor Shower that is like lightning damage or something like that. But I believe this could already make for a rather interesting playstyle. I'm not really convinced of the power of it. So I believe that this, the numbers are just kind of weak. But maybe when you constantly rain down meteors from the two-piece bonus, it's going to be very strong. So maybe you're going to alternate between star packed with full power and like a meteor shower in between. And then it stacks up the smoldering core. Personally, I don't really like this, um, this uh, taunt effect here from the smoldering core. I believe this is something that is going to be extremely annoying. So. Yeah, we'll see how it feels, but I think it's gonna make it rather unfun to play and maybe should be replaced. Yeah, aside from this, we'll see how strong it is. Meteor is definitely cool. I'm really pumped to play Wizard and uh, also the Necromancer. So those two things look amazing. And the Crusader could potentially feel really amazing with all these explosions from Condemn. Yeah, there's an inner nerf, so that was very expected. So they nerfed it, I believe, from 3000% to 900 per Mystic Allies, so this is going to be something like 8 tiers nerf or something like that, which is uh, definitely needed and uh, it's still going to remain with Water Ally as like one of the most powerful farming builds, no matter what. But the main problem I see with this nerf here is that nothing was done about Earth Allies, so they are still going to be like the king of Soda pushing and I believe that this should not be the case because of how clunky they are to play. So I would rather see a bit of a change here with the Inners that actually kills Earth Ally to bring back the Fire Ally for pushing at the least. But yeah, this is about it for the patch. So there's a few other details here. You can read up on those if you like. And also go through the patch notes on your own with the link in the description. But uh, let me know what you think about the patch so far. I think this looks like a really amazing season. I really like the season theme with the Angelic Crucibles where you know the item hunt becomes more interesting again. And uh, we get these like new powerful effects that actually work for all classes to some degree. So that uh, we can definitely try out, you know, some really weird combos. Probably some really powerful builds will come out of this. But it doesn't really seem like completely, you know, crazy OP, like something like the Soul Shard season, for example. And uh, all the set reworks also are really cool, I believe. So quite excited to see how this will be in action. Yeah, let me know what you think, guys. Uh, I'm gonna be back on uh, Sunday evening, as I said earlier in the intro, 
So this will be right before the PDR drops and obviously I'm gonna be live when it starts. So I'll see you on Twitch and see you guys next time.